Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne. This is uh, the prophetic supernatural experience. Uh, this chapter is part, part of part one, all about prophecy. And it's chapter four. Can all Christians be prophetic? It's interesting. Many people would consider you'd have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit in order to move in the prophetic. As uh, the gift of prophecy and word of knowledge and words of wisdom are explained as gifts of the Spirit, and there is a thing called baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a further impartation of the Spirit uh, above and beyond being born again, many would, people would argue that unless you've been baptized in the Spirit, you can't move in the prophetic. You can't move in the gift of prophecy. Um, this, through a couple of experiences that I know and I'll tell you, simply isn't true. For years before I was baptised in the Holy Spirit, I was moving in the gifts of prophecy. I was simply getting told by Jesus, because I could hear Jesus' voice, to tell a certain person a certain thing, and I'd pass that on and I'd be really encouraged. Before I even walked into a Pentecostal church, I was a Baptist boy, and before I even walked into a Pentecostal church and got baptised in the Holy Spirit, I was moving in the prophetic. Now, also, I was on a train one time in Sydney, Australia, and uh, Jesus had a, like a 20-minute message for a, a young Christian Anglican girl on the train. I told her, if Jesus could talk to you right now, would you be willing to hear what he's got to say, even if it was a fairly long message? And she said, I'd love to. And I said, well, next time I say my name, Matthew, it'll be Jesus speaking. And I said, Matthew is nervous about this, but I want to say these things to you today. And Jesus launched into it for about 20 minutes. At the end of that train trip, I asked her if she would love to move in the gift of prophecy and to be able to pass on a personal message from Jesus to someone just like I did. She said she did and I said raise your hand and pray this prayer. I led her in a prayer and then she prophesied over me. I tested the gift, tested that the gift had come upon her and asked her to prophesy over me. It says in Revelation that the um, the Spirit of Jesus, or something like, uh, I haven't got the exact uh, uh, verse, but it says uh, the test that the Spirit of Jesus is the Spirit of prophecy. It basically says if you've got the Spirit of Jesus, you've got the Spirit of prophecy. If you can hear from the Holy Spirit, if you can hear from God, you can prophesy to another people, uh, another person. People assume. The prophecy is something mystical and magical, and it is supernatural. To walk up to a person with a direct message of God, which conquers or solves a problem that they have in their life, is a tremendously uh, important gift, and it is a supernatural gift. But moving all that aside, it's something that you can do. It's something that an ordinary Christian, if they're in tune with God, can pass on a message to another Christian or another person who isn't a Christian. You see, the world likes to complicate things. And though there's much to learn in the prophetic and for moving in, moving in the prophetic for many years, I've been learning. But the gift is essentially easy to move in. There's a sense of maturity that comes with the gift of prophecy and the gifts of prophecy. You can grow in maturity in the gift and in experience in the gift. But James says every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. And that's scripture, which means that the gifts that come down from God are perfect. The gift of prophecy is something that everyone should move in. Moses 
said that he wished that all men were prophets. Uh, the Apostle Paul said everyone should uh, covet the gift of prophecy. You know, covet in, to covet someone's uh, goods or to covet something in the Old Testament is part of the Ten Commandments. We're commanded not to do it. But the Apostle Paul says we should earnestly desire and covet the gift of prophecy. It's something that should be on your top ten list. It's something that every Christian should desire. The Apostle Paul says we should seek after the best gifts. And the Apostle Paul said the gift, best gift was prophecy. Now prophecy flows out of uh, compassion and it flows out of love. To operate in word of knowledge, uh, which is to give supernatural information to a person that they don't know, You've got to have love for the person because if you blow it, if you say something that isn't true about their life, uh, suddenly they think you're a fool. So you've got to have love. So we can't say that necessarily that um, the best gift is prophecy, even though Paul said it. My pastor said to me that the best gift is love and uh, the prophecy actually flows out of love. If you don't have enough love, uh, you can't prophesy well. Although Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 that you can prophesy without love. Uh, he said it was possible to move in the gift without love. But uh, prophecy is uh, an expression of love for your brethren, for other people. So... Can all Christians be prophetic? Yes, they can. It's a choice. Uh, building on choosing the prophetic experience, chapter 3, you've got to choose that choice to enter that war because it is a war and there's real opposition. The spiritual warfare in your life does increase when you choose to be prophetic. So I want to see you walking in the prophetic. I want to hear from you. I want to uh, have you ask for the impartation, chapter 55. I want to hear you prophesy over my life as a test of your gift. See you later. See you in the next chapter.